my method my method is not just singing songs for people that come to my channel and watch videos where I start dissing exercises that other teachers give that aren't from songs I need you to understand and watch more of my videos because it's very unlikely that you do my method is not just singing a song from beginning to end and that is how to train the voice 100% not my method is taking songs and breaking them into tiny pieces down to one note at a time if needed and learning that one note and then building until you learn the 300 or so notes that are in the song and all the elements that are comprised within the song as a whole so notes do different things that's that's what the elements are so matching a note is called pitch accuracy matching the notes within the scale of the song is called staying in key um, matching the the pitch and the rhythm at the same time is called melody matching notes that bounce a certain way is called vibrato matching notes that go very quickly in a grouping is called runs uh, matching notes that go very high compared to what normal people can kind of sing or very low is called range Matching notes that break into a different part of your voice such as falsetto is called falsetto Going from chest into falsetto is called blend all these kind of things all these are elements matching the volume of the singer These kind of things. This is what my program or my method my way of teaching is about It's about taking songs and making them into tiny bits and pieces so that you can get every single detail that the singer is doing the same way they do it not with the same tone but with the same way in terms of pitch vibrato runs and all the elements I mentioned same volume same range not the same tone now the problem with exercises and seeing teachers when they talk about ideas like compression closure twang and these kind of things what they're doing is they're trying to get you to imitate the tone of the singer ah, ah, like imitate the way someone else sounds <sighs> we don't want to imitate how people sound in that way because our voices are all unique that's what makes singing special our voices are different so why would we want to imitate someone else's voice what we want to imitate is the pitch the mathematical side of how they match pitch and how they match timing for example, uh, two different voices doing the same musical elements would be if I hand drum on a table or if I hand drum on an instrument that's made of like sheepskin or whatever or a hand drum on a piece of wood that's like a box called a cajon or if I clap. It's all the same musical element but it's a different instrument and our voices are all different instruments because we're in different bodies, we have different genetics, our voices are different. They're not meant to sound the same. That's why we do imitation, to sound like someone else in a funny way. Not, we don't actually sing like that. We sing like what we speak like. Our speaking voice is unique, and that's what we sing like. A unique sounding voice that's similar to how we speak, not too far removed. Now when you sing uh, the way I'm saying, you learn to copy the singer's ability in music, the musical elements like vibrato, runs, pitch accuracy, volume, range, sliding, that kind of stuff, that's what you copy. You don't copy their tone. So when I sing like Michael Bublé, I don't try to copy his exact tone. When I sing like Craig David, I don't try to sing like his exact tone. It's silly because then it's not me. Then I won't sound like me. I don't want to sound like Craig David exactly. So if you play Craig David and you play me, you're like, oh, it's Craig David. I don't want to trick you into thinking I'm Craig David. I want to sing as Rashed, with Rashed's voice, sounding, singing Craig David's song, sounding like Rashed, but singing it as accurately as Craig does. Pitch accuracy, copying every single note change, every note exactly as is within my voice, without changing my tone to imitate his tone. His natural given tone is, has nothing to do with his ability to match pitch and all that. That's different. That's stuff you have to learn how to do. Everyone has to learn how to match pitch, do vibrato, sing high notes within their instrument. 
within their instrument. Every guitar, for example, they're all guitars, but they're all made maybe of different wood, so they sound different. The wood, you don't try to make one guitar sound like another guitar. It can't because the wood is different, right? And the, the, even if the shape, even if the size of the, the body and everything is the same, if the wood is different, it's old or whatever, it's going to sli sound slightly different, right? Voices, now we make guitars, but we don't make people, right? So our voices are definitely always different. So we're not copying each other's tone. We're copying, for example, what the guitar is doing, which frets are being played. And then the next guitar plays which frets. And if they're a different wood, they're going to sound different. They're unable to sound like the other one. Now, we can imitate other people. We can do that. But we don't want to do that when we're singing. We don't want to imitate the way someone sounds their tone. If they have a slightly like tone like that and we're going to copy that, you know, people talk like that, right, for real. Or if, or if they're like, yeah, man, if they talk like that, if they talk like that, we don't want to copy that. We don't want to copy that aspect of the singer because then it'll sound like imitation. It'll sound like a joke. For example, if I copy John Legend, I, I don't want to sing like that. If I copy John Legend, I, that's my voice. That's how I sing with as close to my natural speaking voice as possible. That's what you've got to learn to do. And when you're learning exercises such as compression, closure and twang, the problem is that if there isn't a reference that you're copying, like what melody are you trying to copy, that kind of stuff, what kind of volumes are you trying to copy, that stuff feels a bit vague and doesn't really apply. So don't, you don't just copy someone else's voice tone. That's what, that's what ends up, and people end up sounding weird when they go to sing. They end up having like a weird tone when they sing, when they're kind of copying or doing like a character kind of a sound when they sing. They sound very different. Listen to Elvis, for example. He doesn't sound extremely different from when he speaks. The best singers, in my opinion, don't sound very different when they speak and sing. They have the same kind of a sound to them. The ones to me that are a bit strange are the ones that kind of change their tone and they sound like something else. Like, um, who's an example? Sia is an example. Like, she, she really changes her sound when she sings from how she speaks uh, to, a, to a degree. Um, indie singers tend to do it. They, they don't sound like at all like what they speak like. They, they change a lot, maybe the way they say words, etc. So, to me, that, that's, I don't enjoy that kind of voice as much because I find them, they sound similar. They sound too similar to each other because they're kind of imitating a tone and then they all kind of copy that tone. So I'm more into using your voice and learning the mathematical or musical kind of elements that are involved in singing pitch, um, rhythm, you know, runs, vibrato, range, volume, all that kind of stuff within your current sound. Okay, hope that makes things clearer. I break songs down into bits and work on them so I can get the musical elements correct, not so I can imitate the singer's voice. That's why you don't need external exercises, because if the goal is the song, all you need to do is break the song into tiny bits and pieces, one note at a time if necessary, and work on that song that way, and that will develop those skills, the pitch, the volume, if there's like um, a, whatever kind of like a sound the, the singer is trying to come across like is it is he singing what's well, volume like is he singing soft is he singing kind of like it goes light on certain notes but really loud and heavy on certain notes it's just volume you learn how to control the volume you modify it within your voice you don't change your tone to sound like the singer and you don't need to go to an exercise that doesn't have any song in context you don't even know what pitch you're trying to copy and you're just copying mum 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 or whatever it is nay 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 and you're making sounds that have nothing to do with the song why would you do that when you could just sing the song now what do I, what do I mean by breaking a song down here's an example um, when marimba start to play hold me close make me sway so let's say you're trying to learn that part you don't just sing it you, maybe you try to sing it first and then a teacher or yourself, you analyze yourself or you get a teacher to analyze you and you break that down into tiny bits where you make mistakes. So that's why teaching is so important, a mentor, because the mentor tells you where you're wrong. So I would listen to you. 
I'll tell you where you're wrong. I'll be like, you started a bit wrong. When, when, you got that note right, let's fix that. When, when, try that. So it's like the singer's doing it the same volume. You don't just go, when, just, just for kicks. Or you don't go, when, you know. You try to do it like the singer's doing it. So the singer's going, when. Now you don't try to copy the singer's sound like, when. Like what Buble, maybe Buble might sound like that. You don't copy that. You just copy the volume, when, when, within your sound. And then you build up notes. When marimba start to play. So the hard bit will be when it goes to the two. When marimba start to... You have to learn how to switch to that note accurately. Some people can't even do the... When marimbas, they're all the same note, but they have trouble changing words on the same note. So every person has a different issue and when you sing a song, you can find out what those issues are and work on them within the context of the song. If you remove the song, what are you working on? What are you working on? The goal has been removed. Remember, these ideas of these lessons that people are giving you, they're just ideas people have come up with with how to teach. It doesn't mean they're right. Just because there's a lot of them doesn't mean they're right. Let's say if you're a Christian, for example, there, there's a, maybe two billion Christians in the world. Does that mean Christianity is right? It doesn't. Numbers don't mean it's right because there's also two billion, two billion Muslims in the world and a billion Buddhists in the world and a billion atheists in the world. The number of teachers saying something doesn't make it right. What makes it right is whether it works or not. So I would say removing yourself from the song and is not the way to get better at the song. I haven't seen how that works, okay? Um, so what I would do is stay in the song and break the song into tiny pieces. Don't just sing the song 10 times. That's not practice. Practice is breaking the song into tiny pieces where you make mistakes, where you don't match the singer's ability in pitch, rhythm, runs, vibrato, etc., volume, range. Breaking that down, modifying it by slowing it down or changing key, and then gradually getting faster after you learn how to match the key or match the notes and becoming as fast as the song, okay? This, this method, I hope this clarifies and this is the video, you, you need to go over it again and see, all right? And ask me questions if you don't understand. Don't just argue with me, ask me questions to understand my system. But I know most of you people leaving comments are not here to learn. You're here to tell me, oh no, you bagged out my favorite teacher. I hate you. You're wrong. I want you to learn from me what a, a new thing that teachers do not talk about. I'm a curious guy, so when I, I like to hear what teachers have to say. I try to figure out what did these teachers really mean? How can I apply this in the real world? I really try to figure that out. And that is how I got to this method of breaking songs into tiny little pieces and building them up. Now, it sounds simple, but it's actually not. It's very complicated breaking a song into tiny little pieces because there's a lot of details that beginners and intermediates don't copy. There's a lot of details that they don't know are going on, which is why you need someone advanced to tell you, you can't see, but these are the mistakes that you're making. Let me help you fix them. Let me show you the progression to fixing them and let me guide you through it because it might take you three years. It's a long road and there's a lot of progression steps to get to the final goal. Some people are more natural and they learn the steps quicker. They might learn it in three months. Some people will take three years to learn the same concept. That's where natural gifts come in and how quick you learn. Everyone has to learn, but the speed of learning comes from your natural, what you're gifted with. Okay, you're more gifted, you're faster. You're not as gifted, you're slower. All right, guys, I hope that explains more that my system is not just about singing songs from beginning to end. That is not practice that is fun that is the goal to sing the song from beginning to end that is not practice at all i do i never get my students to sing a song from beginning to end only maybe at the beginning of, of a lesson where i say okay show me how you're going let me see where you're at perform and that's a performance it's not practice singing a song from beginning to end or singing a verse and a chorus it's a performance not a practice a practice is breaking down the song note by note to get every element right, runs, vibrato, pitch accuracy, rhythm, volume, range, blend, falsetto, etc. All right, guys, Rashad Hayek, rbclessons.com to get more info. See you next time. Bye.